The February 23rd, 2017 City Council meeting is now called to order. Tonight, our prayer and pledge will be led by the Reverend Evan Doley, the Associate Minister for Family Life at First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, Longview, Texas. Please rise. Will you join with me in prayer? In the stillness of this moment, speak to us, O God. We are thankful Longview is a diverse and vibrant city that brings together the blending of cultures, races, religious expressions, belief systems, and languages. All of these parts coalesce into a beautiful picture or a reflection of you, O oh God, our maker. We remember that there are those in our community who struggle and that there are those who are comfortable we pray for those who are working and those who are without work. We remember the homeless and the well-housed. We pray for those who are frustrated with their current situation and for those who are fulfilled and content. We pray for those who mourn. We celebrate with those full of joy. Oh God, guide those in all branches of our government to place the welfare of the citizens above political action groups re-election campaigns and partisan politics. May we rid our minds of artificial labels that divide us. May we tear down walls that ne needlessly separate us and build bridges of unity and trust, mercy and understanding. O oh, divine maker, the challenges that lie before us are not Republican or Democratic issues. Rather, they are moral issues that speak to the way that your followers understand you your teachings, your commands, and the call upon their lives. May we not lose sight of who we are created to be. May we not lose sight of the fact that all persons, documented or undocumented, citizens or refugee, are all created in your holy and divine image. May we find courage, hope, strength, and guidance to complete the tasks that lay ahead. Grant this for the sake of your righteous name. Give success to the work of our hands. Through Jesus the Christ, the Holy One of God, we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you join me now in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Dolly. Thanks, sir. Tonight, our employee recognition is centered around the Longview, the Longview Human Resources and Risk Management Department. The City of Longview Human Resources and Risk Management Department is made up of Joe Berry, Linda Clark, Robin Edwards, Terry Fields, Katie Fisher, Shakisha Isaac, Rose Jensky, Lee Lloyd, Bonnie Newman, Lauren Patterson and Marianne Miller. And they're all out here, so y'all please come on forward. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> the city of Longview has approximately 860 full-time employees and 165 part-time employees. Human Resources works closely with the city departments on the Family Medical Leave Act, tuition reimbursement, job recruitment and retention, and enforcing city policies. Human Resources is also responsible for ensuring compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act and Department of Labor. HR includes a payroll division which oversees the payroll processes for all city employees. Risk management oversees workers' compensations, claims, workplace safety, defensive driving training, and citizens' concern regarding property and liability issues. Risk management also provides all employees benefits including health insurance coverage for city employees and their dependents, more than 1,600 people. In addition, they manage the employee health clinic which provides free immediate care for minor illnesses and injuries for all the people on the city's health plan. Additionally, HR and risk provide numerous training opportunities for our employees each year, including supervisors network, new employee orientation, ethics classes, sexual harassment training, diversity training, and financial fair, and the annual benefits fair. And that's a lot. <laughs> but I can tell you this group is a wonderful, energetic, kind group of ladies and gentlemen that serve us as the citizens. 
and I've been to this department and I visit them and I walk in and they make me feel so welcome and we got to take pictures and I see what they do and it's overly impressive the amount of work that they accomplish on a daily basis that most of us don't even realize is being done. You caught that 860 employees. That's a lot of employees for HR to be in, involved with and risk to be involved with. So you all do a phenomenal job for our city. You all are a branch that we cannot do without. Thank you for your service, your dedication. We don't say it enough, but we appreciate what you do and all the things that you accomplish for our city. Thank you all so very much. How many of y'all envy this one guy with this group of women? <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Appreciate you. Once again, if you ever have a chance or a need to visit with this group, you will be treated so well, as you will all of our city departments. I do take time and visit the departments um, on a semi-regular basis, not to get in their way, but just to see what they do and to understand what they go through. And it's, it's an amazing process what, uh, what this city accomplishes on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's very impressive. If you have the time, go by. They'd love to show you around and show you what they do. You would be uh, as impressed as I was with, the, with what takes place. So thank you all very, very much. We are to citizen comment. I have one speaker card, Ms. Blessed Webb. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you for this opportunity to speak this evening. I'm here because I'd like to address a concern that my neighbors and I on North Park Circle have that involves not only our neighborhood, but other areas of the city as well. Also, the fact that I've contacted and my neighbors have contacted the city on multiple occasions to address our concerns without response. I take that back, I'm sorry. We've been told to be patient. We've been told that you're working on it. However, our frustration level is just increasing incrementally by the day. Uh, the issue at hand is the fact that an investor has bought a a property on our street and has converted it into a multifamily residence. And by multifamily, I mean a four bedroom home has had now the garage divided with a kitchenette and bathroom on each side to now have apartments for basically six people. As of today, there were seven cars either in front of the house or in the driveway. To the best of our knowledge, the city has not been able to do an inspection internally to see if there are fire um, issues addressed for safety for the residents. Um, each resident, um, we don't know the background or the history. We have children in our neighborhood. We have senior adults. So we don't know if we have people with uh, criminal backgrounds or if they are sexual predators. Uh, we worry about our security, our home values. I've lived in my home since 1996. I've invested time and money uh, to keep my house appealing to me and to my neighborhood standards. And it's very disheartening. Uh, I know I've met with several of you all on different occasions, but we really are getting frustrated and at our wits end about what we're going to do, especially with the increase in the traffic and the parking on the street um, and it's our home. And I would just like to express my concern and then ask you to please follow up and follow through. We've been told by planning and zoning that there is nothing that we just need to, there's nothing they can do. I find it a little hard to believe <coughs> that a four bedroom home would be converted then to house basically seven little apartmentettes for people in a neighborhood. Um, Thank you for your time. Uh, I do have documentation I can provide again, uh, and I do appreciate the time that you various people have given me in the past. 
but my neighbors and I are just very frustrated uh, and want something done. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Webb. And, and Ms. Webb, we are working on this. We have met about it and we are working on it. And I know you don't like the word be patient, but these things do take some time. We have not forgotten about you, I assure you. Okay? Thank, thank you. you so much. We're down to our public safety update. Chief Bishop. Mayor Mack, council members, Mr. Willard, good evening. Uh, last council meeting, I, I provided you an update on our ballistic vest drive um, that was going on from various fundraisers throughout uh, the city, uh, donations from different individuals. Last week, we held a, uh, a reception for the donors uh, and kind of showed them off the vest before they were issued out to the officers. and and announced at that time that we had raised close to $59,000 to purchase 64 vests and uh, we had 20 more that were ready to be ordered. Um, during the course of this meeting, at the end of this meeting, local businessman Tom Chin was in attendance and at the end of the meeting, uh, he informed the group that he wanted to make a donation uh, to cover the remaining 108 vests that need to be made, uh, need to be purchased. So he has, he has donated uh, a little over $75,000 to complete the purchase of these ballistic vests for the officers. And I know I, along with the officers, are very grateful for him and his donation and his willingness to, uh, to support for such a great cause. So the next council meeting, um, I'll officially be coming on the agenda to ask you to approve that donation from, uh, from Mr. Chin. I want to just briefly uh, cover a couple of major cases this week uh, where we made some significant arrests. If you remember back in August of, of 2016, uh, Laterno Federal Credit Union was robbed uh, by an individual. Uh, the FBI actually made an arrest in that case of an individual in Tucson, Arizona, who had robbed several banks and credit unions along <coughs> the different uh, major interstate corridors. Uh, we also uh, made an arrest in the February 9th, 2017th robbery of Austin Bank. I want to I want to uh, put out there. I want to thank DPS, the Kilgore Police Department, and Gregg County Sheriff's Office in helping us bring these individuals into custody. Once we identified the suspects and the information started coming in, we had to have several agencies assist us with that, and I want to uh, thank them for their assistance. And then also. Uh, we made another significant arrest of two individuals out of Houston at the SEFCO on Judson Road. Um, and this particular case had to deal with uh, credit card skimmers that were placed on a, on a gas pump. So I thought I'd take a minute and talk just a little bit about these credit card skimmers and how our citizens can be aware when they're using an ATM or a gas pump or something like that. Um, you can see on, on the left side picture here is, is just a normal uh, credit card uh, receiver on the machine. But if you look at the one on the right, you can see that extended piece of plastic that fits over the top of it. That's actually a skimmer that's been placed on top of that. And when that skimmer's on there, when an individual puts their card in and enters their PIN, it reads the card number and it also reads the PIN number. Mm. Uh, on the gas pumps too, uh, there's another, another thing that you can be vigilant for. Uh, I'm sure you all have seen the, the security tape that they put over the door to tell whether the door's been uh, opened without an official person doing that. If you look at the one on the left, you see a, a pretty solid red seal, but the one on the right, once that tape is pulled off, it brings the white markings out in the back that says void. So if you see a piece of tape that, that has those uh, markings on it, like it's been altered, that would be a sign that that door may have possibly uh, been opened up. Some things that uh, individuals can do uh, to avoid these skimmers. Uh, one is use cash. I know everybody's used to using their debit cards, but one way to not become a victim of credit card or debit card abuse is to uh, to use cash. Uh, check for tampering on the doors and even on the, on, even on the, uh, the, the gadget that you put your, your credit card into, 
if individuals will take a minute if they think that there may be a skimmer on there to just touch it and see if it moves because those skimmers are usually loosely attached and may may wiggle or come off altogether. Um, stay close to the store. Use uh, pumps that are that are close to where they can be visible. Usually the pumps that are far out towards the road may be the ones that, uh, that the skimmers are put on. Um, one other thing is, uh, is when you're using your debit card, uh, you can choose to have that process as a credit card. And if it processes as a credit card, you don't have to enter your PIN number, you enter your zip code. So if there is a skimmer on that, all they're getting is your, your, your zip code and not your, not your PIN number. And then uh, the last thing is to check your balance frequently. Uh, I know I was a victim of one of these uh, from a gas pump in Oklahoma. And when I checked my balance, I had transa transactions coming up in California. So um, that's one way with the first sign that you would uh, see to have that. Also tonight, before the meeting, prior to the meeting, I left each of you a copy of our 2016 racial profiling report. This is an annual report that is prepared by Dr. Alex Del Carmen. Um, I left each of you a copy of the report after you've had an opportunity to review it. If you have any questions about it, I'd be more than glad to visit with you and uh, discuss the report. Also, uh, over the last several days, there has been a lot of information out there pertaining uh, information on social media pertaining to our situation here in Longview with our gangs. Yesterday, uh, I prepared a video that we put out on social media to tell the whole story about our current situation uh, pertaining to uh, our local issues here with our gangs. And if you haven't had an opportunity to see that video, I have it here uh, tonight. If you're like me, you've probably done something like this before. We read a bold headline in the news or we see a flashy statistic on social media and then we allow our imagination to start filling in the blanks before we take time to get an understanding of the facts. But there is often much more to the story. I think this happened recently. A story in the Longview News Journal referencing statements from one of our police officers said that there were 42 gangs in Longview. As you could imagine, that started quite a bit of a social media frenzy. 42 gangs in Longview, really? Well, not exactly. Let me explain for just a moment. First, in reality, there are only a small number of individuals, maybe around 30 or so, that we believe are actively participating in just a handful of loosely organized gangs. So why were 42 gangs mentioned? State statute allows for law enforcement to track and identify gang members. The Longview Police Department monitors and tracks possible gang activity and its members in order to be vigilant for our community and as a tool to help deter crime. That database currently shows 274 individuals representing 42 different groups, but the full story is that a majority of those gangs are either not active in Longview, may only have one member in Longview, or those members were only loosely associated. Secondly, I believe we are making progress. I would prefer that we have no gangs, but the good news is that the number of gangs, the number of active gang members, and the amount of gang activity appears to be decreasing. Of those 274 members in our database, 100 of them are currently in prison or in jail waiting trial. We have made significant progress working with regional, state, and federal resources to arrest and charge individuals and we will continue to do so. Third, the gang activity that we see in Longview is generally not highly organized. It is not like the gang activity you would see in a bigger city. Although we have in recent years had issues with gang-on-gang -gang violence, most of the activity we are currently seeing is very loosely organized, often involves a small group of young people, and has been related to drugs, property crime, and criminal mischief. So, are there 42 active gangs in Longview? No, I don't think so. But I do think there is still more to be done. It is still very important that we do everything that we can to eliminate this type of criminal behavior. 
You can help by reporting any suspicious or criminal behavior to the police. You can get involved in activities that provide young people with positive role models. Get to know your neighbors and get involved in the Neighborhood Crime Watch group. Working together as a community, we can continue to make Longview a safe and wonderful place to live. Thank you for your support for the Longview Police Department. So that went out on our social media uh, platform. Uh, and at this point, I'd be more than glad to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions of the chief? <clears throat> Just a comment, chief. First of all, thank you for taking the time to do the video and to help educate and inform because I know you all get, you're caught up in doing police work. That's what you're supposed to do. And I get that. And, and I appreciate that. And I know you work very hard every day doing so. But I know the public appreciates when you'll take the time with city staff, and I know a lot of effort went into this, to put something out like this that helps them understand, because it is our job to better communicate with the citizens. It's our job to do that. And I know sometimes we don't always do a good job of that because we're busy doing police work. But it helps, it's important, it's educational, and I know this, I have had so many calls about this video, and just thank you for letting us know you know, we read something, we hear something, and it's, it's human nature to jump to conclusion. We all do that. But it's nice when you clarify and you make it known what the rest of the story has to say. And, and, it, and it really is our job to do better with communicating and letting the public know what's going on because that's, uh, that's part of, uh, of public safety. So I really appreciate that and I appreciate the time and, and we will do a better job from all of our standpoints and city staff of communicating those to, to, the, to the news medias as well. It's our, it's our obligation to do that. So uh, we, will, we will do better and I think we'll end up with better uh, reporting and better understandings and better, uh, better outcomes. So I really appreciate that. Um, because Chief, I know that was a, that was a big deal with the gangs and, and, and it's good to know what is really going on. You know, I mean, you have to report the gangs, but if, if there are 42 gangs, but only two of them or three of them are creating problems with us. That's what we need to be aware of. I mean, my wife's in a gang. They call it birthday club, but it's a gang, you know. <laughs> uh, but they're not, they're not detrimental to anybody but me. But, um, but you know, it's, it's important that you, that you put these things out there because what it does, it allays fears, and that's, that's what we're supposed to do. And, you know, the flip side of that, it's, it's easy to respond on social media or other avenues of information with a knee-jerk reaction of, well, why aren't you doing this or why aren't you doing that? And I've seen some of those and it's, it's, it's disappointing, especially when it comes from people that know better, people who, who know what's going on and have been in these positions and, and, and know the struggle that we're going through and the fight that we're fighting. Because if anyone doesn't think we're not fighting this issue 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they need to come and hang out with us for a little bit. Because I know you lose sleep, David lose sleep, I lose sleep, every one of us lose sleep over this because we're fighting this every single day. And we won't stop until there's zero. And that will never happen, which means we will never stop this fight. So it is highly important that, that people understand these knee-jerk reactions don't do anything, they don't do any good. And to print things in social media that, that people know are not true and they make suggestions like, well, why don't you get federal, state, and local people involved? Really? Do you not think we don't have federal, state, and local people involved already? Let's see. We have a special investigations unit that, that basically deals with the street crimes in Longview. We have a DPS officer that's dedicated to gang activity. We have two FBI special task force officers that are dedicating to this deal. We have the code enforcement officers that do the drug and the narcotics. So let's see, federally we deal with FBI, ATF, and DEA, correct? That's correct. State, we have DPS. We deal with them every day, correct? That's correct. Locally, we deal with Gray County Sheriff's Office and Longview Police Department. So who thinks we're not having federal, state, and local help doing this already? I don't understand that mentality, but to put that out there like we're not doing something is insulting. And I'm not gonna sit and be insulted. So if you want to insult me, which you are, then I'm going to tell you the truth, which is what you've done. And I appreciate that, Chief. So um, 
Thanks for the info information, thanks for the input, and, and we're gonna continue to do this because this is important for the public to understand what's going on. So I appreciate that very much. Thanks. Sorry for my rant and rave. I didn't, wasn't really you. planned, but sometimes you gotta say what you gotta say. Chief Stillman. Mayor Mack, members of council, Mr. Willard, thank you for the opportunity to update you on a few things that have been going on in the fire department since we last met. One of our favorite activities is getting to get out into the public in our community and do any type of fire safety training. We had this opportunity uh, Friday of last week to go to Pine Tree ISD and train a lot of, well, most of their bus drivers and their maintenance personnel in the use of a fire extinguisher. You know, as the public, we see fire extinguishers all over the place. We see them in businesses. Hopefully we have them in our homes. And sometimes people are intimidated about using one because they've simply never had that opportunity. And God forbid, if you ever do have to use one, we'd like for you to have some experience so that you know what you're doing and you use it effectively. So that's exactly what we did here. We had a little bit of classroom training. And then the real, meat of the, the, the real meat of the course is to get out in the field and actually let them use the fire extinguisher to fight and control the fire. So you can see some good pictures there of some of their staff doing a diligent job of putting out some of these fires. And, and that's where we want to encourage people if they, have the, the, if they have the equipment, the fire extinguisher, and they have the knowledge to use it and can do so safely, just them keeping a small fire small makes everybody's life a lot better. It makes our job really easy when we get there and they've been able to do exactly that. And building that confidence with these people. You know, you can see it's a great picture there. That lady now has a, an overwhelming degree of confidence because she's actually used that fire extinguisher to fight and control the fire. So I, I, I'll put my sales pitch in here. It doesn't matter where you live, what kind of you rent, if you own, I encourage you to have some type of fire extinguisher available in your house. And, and just for that reason of being able to keep a small fire small. Uh, within the course of the last week, the United States, the National Fire Protection Association and the United States Fire Administration released some statistical data. And I thought it was interesting and, and I decided I wanted to share this with you. Uh, they looked at some major five, actually major focus areas of the United States Fire Service. And I wanted to show you each one of these and relate to you where we, the Longview Fire Department, actually fall in, in the scope of this. So the first bullet point there, 20% of the departments do not have anyone conducting fire code inspections. We actually fall in that 80% piece where we do have 61 inspectors in our fire department that when we're not actively responding to emergencies, hopefully we're working on the prevention side of trying to keep those things from happening in our community through the enforcement of our fire codes and conducting these basic fire and life safety code inspections. 69% of departments have self-contained breathing apparatus. This is the air pack, the tank thing that we wear on our back that is at least 10 years old. And technically, we still fall into this. Our air packs right now are around 12 years old, but I want you to rest assured that through this year's budget process, you remember three years ago, we started a process to phase in the replacement of all of our existing equipment of this type. And through your support in the budget process, we're currently going out for RFQs at this time and, and expect to be coming back to you in the next couple of weeks to approve the final piece of that. I think the cost was somewhere between 450 and $500,000 to make that investment into our department to really get us in good shape for another 10 years. 72% of departments have personal protective equipment that is at least 10 years old. This is the actual protective ensemble that the firefighters wear when they're going into those IDLH, immediately dangerous to life and health environments, fighting fire, conducting search and rescue. Uh, we actually are in really great shape with this and, and we're mandated by the Texas Commission on Fire Protection as a state agency that regulates paid fire departments in Texas that we, we're not allowed to have gear that's over 10 years old. So this is an ongoing process that again, you support through your support of our budget every year. 73% of departments do not provide a program to maintain basic firefighter health and fitness. Again, this is another mandated thing that the fire commission puts down on the paid career fire departments in the state that, that cause us to have to have these types of policies and programs in place, again, which is supported through the budget every year. The, the emerging one, and this is not just locally, this is across the country, 80% of departments do not provide a behavioral health program. What the fire service has experienced in the last couple of years is a high incident of firefighter related suicides. And a lot of it is being traced back to PTSD, similar to what they're seeing with military veterans, just because of the experiences that we have in doing the normal, the normal course of our, the scope of our work. So this is one that we're certainly interested in. We do not have a program yet. We have been in contact in the last several months with Laterno University has stepped up and come forward to say, hey, we have a program out here we would like to bring in to the city, right. to the fire department to provide this type of a service. So we're gonna continue those efforts to correct this pretty quick. Uh, like I said, it is something that we're conscientious of and we wanna take steps to make sure we're doing the right thing by our employees in that regard. 
And finally, uh, the State Fire Marshal's Office recently pushed out a slide, and, and this, is, this is just some fascinating information. People age 65 and older are twice as likely to be killed or injured by fires. I know we live in an aging community. Uh, I've, I've done several research papers, you know, back when we, when we had the certified, uh, the designated retirement, certified retirement community. Uh, this is a growing population in our city. And just a few safety tips if, if you fall into that category. Sleep on the ground floor if possible. Uh, you may have read in the paper several weeks ago, we actually had a fire here in town where some, some, victim, some people were in the house, the residents were in the house on the second floor and had to jump from the windows to the ground and they did suffer some minor injuries, but fortunately they were able to escape the fire. Uh, keep a phone nearby, that way you can activate and initiate that 911 response as soon as possible. And then to make sure you have installed smoke, smoke detectors with some type of a flashing light available. And you know, as the aging process takes place, you get desensitized to things. So not only having that loud audible tone, but having that visual piece to go along with it will certainly expedite, expedite your ability to recognize that there may be a problem. And with that, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Chief Tillman? Chief, comment. I mean, you have no idea that I'm doing this, but um, I received an email this week and I'm gonna read the email to you. And I'm assuming since the email was sent, then I can disclose the name. A Ms. Rose McCollum. January 3rd, 2015, I was transported by ambulance to the hospital. When EMS arrived, I was unresponsive and not breathing. I would like to thank those who absolutely saved my life. It has been two years, but this has been on my mind for quite some time. Between the excellent care of EMS and those who were working trauma that day, everyone went above and beyond normal emergency care. The quick response and level of care definitely made a huge difference in my recovery. Again, thank you very much for the work you do, which is a wonderful thing. But here's why I'm gonna read you this email. Because Chief Steelman responded back to this lady, and I'm gonna read you what Chief wrote. You all, sorry Chief, I'm reading what you wrote. Ms. McCullum, I most certainly appreciate the positive feedback you provided about our crews, and more importantly, I'm thankful that you're able to share the story with me from a personal recollection. It sure sounds like your event could have ended in a much more detrimental permanent result. I will make sure we pass along your comments to our crews who effectively responded to your need on that particular day. Please don't hesitate to let us know if there's anything else we can do for you in the future. And this is how he ended it, in all caps. We work for you. Chief, that that's, that's, that's says it all. Thank you for responding to our citizens, number one. Thank you for providing care as your EMS guys do. But this is personal and I appreciate you taking the time to respond back and let the citizens know that you care because you could have shoved this in the drawer, done whatever you want to do with it. But that statement, we work for you, it says it all. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate sure. you very Thank much. You, Mayor. We are now to consent agenda. Is there any items council would like pulled off for separate discussion? No different, second. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, action item. Consider resolution, evidence and support for the application of the Texas Department of Housing and Community, Community Affairs for 2017. Uh, Mr. Michael Shirley. Thank you, Mayor Mack, members of Council, uh, Mr. Willard. Uh, I, I'm just gonna give a brief overview of the two items that are on the agenda, and then I'm gonna ask uh, Megan Lash to come up and give a brief presentation as well. And then when she's done, I'll, ask, I'll answer any questions that you may have. Um, as you may remember back uh, early, uh, late last year, we had a resolution of support for a project over on Clinic Drive. Uh, this is a very similar project. Both of these are very similar projects with the exception that was new construction. Both of these projects are rehab projects. Uh, one is for the Petroleum Building. Uh, the other one is for the old Weaver Building and it would be to take those properties and rehab them. Um, as you may be aware that 9% uh, program is a, is a federal housing uh, credit for uh, income uh, housing for all income levels uh, for affordable housing. Um, this is something that, uh, as you're aware of, we have a uh, downtown small area plan that's underway um, and the consultants are finalizing that. We're gonna be having some public meetings coming up. Um, but we did assemble the downtown group to see if this was, both of these projects were consistent with uh, their goals and expectations of how we see downtown moving forward. And uh, I think overwhelmingly all the head nods, I mean, we didn't ask for formal action, but all the head nods and the feedback that we got were very positive. And uh, you know, all the, all the professionals are telling us, you know, to, to move downtown redevelopment forward, you need to start with housing. You need to start with 
places for people to live, to get people downtown, and then from that, uh, you will have those other things that will come to, to support that housing. So um, from a standpoint of uh, fitting in with the small area plans that are underway, we feel like it, it fits in with that, which fits in with our comprehensive plan. Uh, Megan will come up and kind of talk about the projects itself. Um, certainly some of the feedback we've heard, and, and we're all, uh, all aware of parking issues that will potentially arise with downtown development, but that's something that the city will address and will be part of the small area plans. I don't think they necessarily have an answer to that, and I, I don't think that they should. It's a, it's a community issue that we'll work through, but, uh, but it is something that, that we're thinking of. Uh, so I'm gonna invite her to come up and then I'll answer any questions after that. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Mayor and Council, my name is Megan Lash. Good to see you all again. I represent Sagebrook Development. Here to talk to you tonight about the Petroleum Building. Um, most of you know the location, 202 Whaley. Um, we have previously been looking at the Weaver Building, as Mr. Shirley mentioned, but right now we are focusing on uh, the Petroleum Building, really kind of narrowing, uh, narrowing our, our sights down onto that property. Um, the key points to the development will be mixed income community, as mentioned, similar to the uh, Clinic Drive property that I brought to you in December. This is a smaller development, so we're looking at between 45 and 55 units. 20 to 30 percent of those units would be unrestricted and would be market rate. So only a few of the, the 45 to 55 units would be mixed income and set aside for affordable. Um, what we're looking at is gearing it towards uh, people just starting out or a senior with a fixed income. So the unit sizes are smaller. They're, you'll notice there are no three bedrooms. So it's efficiencies ones and twos. We're really targeting the, the folks that are working downtown, the young medical staff, the young folks just starting out, or perhaps a senior that is wanting to um, get rid of the, the lawn mowing responsibilities. We will be seeking a historic building designation for the Petroleum Building and revitalizing the exterior and making it look um, new and fresh again. And, and our hope is to help revitalize the, the stressed building in downtown. We will also have, like our other projects, high quality interior finishes. I mentioned who we're targeting. Again, downtown employees, medical district staff, emergency, hospitality, and retail workers. I know several developers have looked at the petroleum building over the years, and um, no one has quite been able to crack the code. Um, we feel that with this financing program that we will be able to um, help secure financing and, and actually bring this project to fruition. Just a quick uh, bullet point on, on how the program works. On a typical conventional financing that most people look at, you're looking at about 25% equity invested into the development and then 75% debt. Our situation is essentially reversed. So when we go out and we secure housing tax credits, um, they're federal tax credits, not state or local, but they're federal tax credits, and we sell those tax credits to a, an investor. That equates to about 75% of the equity in the development, leaving 25% debt. So what that does is it allows us to charge a reduced rent on some of the units and have very little debt on the development and also be able to afford some of the other um, asbestos abatement and some of the challenges that have kept this building from being uh, rehabbed in the past. So one of the things that we like to really uh, drive home is it's the financing program that makes the housing affordable. It's not the product or the rent subsidy. Lower debt means lower monthly mortgage payments, which allows us to have some of the units set aside as affordable rents. And in turn, you get a d developed piece of property on the local tax rolls. So this property will be taxed um, for the school and the, the local jurisdiction. To jurisdictions. Here's a, a unit mix that we're currently looking at. We have um, six efficiencies, 15 one bedrooms, 24 twos, and then there's the average rent on the far right hand side that we would be looking at. Here is a rendering of um, kind of the concept elevation of what it would look like once we revitalize the outside. We're also planning, as part of this redevelopment, a, a rooftop amenity deck. So we have a fitness center and a viewing deck from the top that we have designed. And here are some examples of uh, what some of the spaces would look like. The, the one on the right is actually the office that would be um, on the space. This is a property that we recently developed in Austin. And with that, I'll take questions. Any questions for Ms. Lash? How does the equity investors recoup their investment? 
So th the reason for their investment is they get a tax break. So the equity investor, so the person buying the tax credit, they get a dollar for dollar tax write-off on their federal taxes. They also are given CRA credits. So typically, um, what are what typi is typically, what is sure. Um, typically they are, um, the people buying the credits are banks. And so they have a community reinvestment credit that they have to satisfy. So the bank buys the tax credit, they get that dollar for dollar investment that they can write off their tax bill, and they also satisfy their CRA credit needs, the Community Reinvestment Act credit. What is the longevity of keeping this property? The longevity, we have to be in partnership with them, with the tax credit investor for a minimum of 15 years. Um, the, the affordability runs for at least 35 years. So I can tell you we've been in business 20 years. We have not sold a single property that we have developed us utilizing this program because even after that investor exits, they're good quality products um, that are, are good assets for us to hold on to. So the whole business model is to have a long-term ownership perspective. Um, you know, we have developed now over 60 properties and have not sold a single one. So it's really about building your portfolio and holding on to the good quality asset. Any other questions? Thank you, Megan, well, for your... I'm Megan, sorry, one sorry. thing I appreciate, uh, all the new developments are nice, but I appreciate there's plenty of, we have plenty of properties in town similar to the petroleum building that it's nice to see them be redeveloped and uh, taken out of the stage that they're in, that they're currently in, so I appreciate that. Yeah, we thank, thank you for your commitment to doing something like this. If, if it does work out, it um, should be a very nice... Uh, addition to downtown versus the eyesore that we're dealing with for the last yes. however many years we've dealt with that. So thank you very much. No Any other questions? Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we now have a resolution supporting the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs. Mr. Shirley again. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council, Mr. Willard. This is just the uh, second project uh, of the ones that she discussed. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Mr. Shirley? Okay. So I guess this one's off the table for the time being. Is that correct? They're still pursuing the uh, resolution of support, but I think as they're getting through their due diligence, it, it seems that the petroleum building is a better fit for their their application process. And I'll is that correct? So, but it doesn't hurt for us to approve the resolution. It gives correct. them the ability, if they so desire, to pr pursue the Weaver building. They can. Correct. Correct. Very good. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Shirley. Thank you, Megan. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. We're now to items of community interest. Um, before we do that, I'm sorry. When we had um, um, citizen comment, I failed to ask if anybody cared to comment that didn't have a speaker card because you're welcome to, but you have to fill out a speaker card afterwards. That was my mistake. Thank you very much. Okay. Items of community interest. Uh, first off, Mr. Moore is not here. Can we have an excuse for Mr. Moore? That we excuse Mr. Moore? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Ms. Snotty. Great. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to say thank you to Chief Stillman um, for a very informative uh, report. I mean, you always do such a, a great job. Also, Chief Bishop, you looked awesome on the video. Great job on the, on the video. Um, and I, I pray that you guys make a lot more significant arrests. So great job. Um, last but not least, congratulations to our co-counsel women, uh, Kasha and, and Ishihara for uh, uh, sitting in their seat again for the next three years. So I'm pretty excited about that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anna. Ms. Williams. Uh, okay, thank you to both chiefs, and I do have a question. I didn't know about the red tape. I've been wondering what that was for Chief Bishop on the gas machines. And Chief Stillman, how long is my fire extinguisher good for? They recommend it, it needs to be inspected yeah. annually. Oh, okay, okay then. Just to make sure that it's going to work <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, I need, probably need a new one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, got to do it while it's on the brain. Um, the public is invited to come in. Oh, okay, Unity Honors. Uh, that's me and my good friend Chris Jones. I want to congratulate publicly Mrs. Evelonia Barrett-Bolton and Judge Bill Stout. Um, at the unit for receiving the Unity Honors Award. I want to publicly acknowledge staff and thank them. Keita King, Holly Fuller, Laura, you guys, the event continues to grow. And I am so glad that I've been around even before I was on council to see this event continue to evolve. This is something that sets Longview 
apart. And, and we will hopefully continue to budget and expand the budget for this event every year. So congratulations to everyone. Okay, uh, so we have a new restaurant opening downtown Longview, Bon Ton, which oh, is Lord. good times on France, <laughs> uh, my kind of spot. Um, they will be offering uh, New Orleans style cuisine. They will be officially opening on Tuesday, which is Fat Tuesday. I won't be here, but council, please go and eat there. Uh, it's gonna be a really great uh, place and a great addition to downtown. Hopefully we will have some housing coming downtown if we are awarded that bid in the region. So uh, go and support them please on Tuesday from 11 to I believe 10 p.m. Small area plan. The public is invited to come out. Um, we are having small area plan citizen meetings. Myself and council member Ishihar, we co-chair um, all of what that's called. And uh, we will be having this meeting at 6 p.m. to 7.30 on Thursday, March the 2nd. Um, we need input. The comprehensive plan has already given us the template. So we really have all we need, but the kind of community we are and the kind of mayor and council that we are, we want additional feedback. Hence, the mayor has a survey every week. Come on, y'all. <laughs> so come on out, give us your input, give us your feedback. Don't come and grovel. That's not what this is about. This is about taking Longview to the next level. And we want your input. We want you to be there. So this is Tuesday, Thursday, March the 2nd, 6 to 7.30 p.m. And I think, is that the end of my slides? I do want to acknowledge someone, um, a good friend to the community. Vic Verma was in a serious automobile accident this week. I just want to ask everyone to continue to lift Vic up in prayer. Uh, you know, whether you like or do, don't like the way he may handle certain things, I love me some Vic, and I'll tell anybody that he is a, a part of the fiber and the fabric of this community. So continue to lift him up in your prayers, please. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Shihara. Uh, I do. Yep, there we go. Thank you. Uh, this Saturday is our Zonta Walk Against Violence. As you know, the Zonta Club of Longview is focused on ending violence against women as well as raising awareness about sex and human trafficking, uh, which does happen here in our community. So mm -hmm. please join us. Um, it, the registration begins at 8. Uh, the walk begins, I believe, at 8.30? 9. 9? 9. 9. 9. It's, yeah, the event is free, um, so please come join us. We'll have balloons again. Uh, it's a great time to get together um, and talk about an important issue in our community. It happens at First Baptist Church downtown, and the walk begins at 9, but you can be there as early as 8. Also, uh, wait, the, wait, wait, oh. you don't have to wear regular, you, you don't do, have to wear girl shoes? You can wear any you shoes, shoes you want. I, oh, I told Mayor Mack he needed to wear his red high heels again. I've been again. dreading this okay. the whole two weeks you asked me, two weeks ago, I thought, I can't do that again in those shoes. But everybody has normal shoes on. You do not okay. have to wear red high heels. Should you choose to wear red high heels, you I do not are choose that. No, I do not, I do not choose that. <laughs> uh, also happening on Saturday uh, is the Zonta Club of Longview puts on a prom boutique um, and every year we provide free dresses to uh, high school or junior high girls who are in need of a formal for any you know we call it the prom boutique but it's a formal dress for any event that you may need it for it is free we provide you a dress we provide you a personal shopper that goes around and helps you pick out your fancy dress for your important event so that you feel beautiful so uh, anyone is welcome to attend that one um, we do get a line that backs up quite a bit so that one I probably would be there at eight that's all also at First Baptist Church this Saturday, so at 10, oh my goodness, at 10 a.m. it starts the prom boutique, but you could probably be there at 8 for the line and join us in the walk, so that's it. Thank you. Mr. Wright. Well, first, um, anybody, I've seen women walking in, the, in that thing in their spike heel shoes, and I've tried to do it, and so anybody who can do that, I'm impressed with them. Uh, this past weekend, my Rotary Group and a lot of other organizations in Longview picked up trash along the city streets, and I want to thank everybody for doing that, but what's really disappointing is that you drive by those same streets the next morning, and there's trash all over them all over again. And, uh, you know, it really bothers me that we can't keep this place kind of picked up. And this past year, 2016, there were 10 tickets written for litter come, being thrown out of windows of cars. We spent, according to Roland McPhee, we spent $44,000 we have budgeted to pick up trash with our crews that go out and pick up trash along the sides of the roads. It's costing our city a lot of money. Um, 
I would like to see this become a point of emphasis with the police when they see stuff thrown out of the windows of cars that it gets that they get a ticket written for them. These people don't have any more right to throw to trash our city streets than a company does to uh, pollute our water or our air. So I would like to see something a real point of emphasis made to get some of this cleaned up and taken care of. Thank you, sir, Mr. Pirtle. <clears throat> Well, David, I'm glad you said that because next, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, you can uh, join me over on the Tron Road and uh, <laughs> spend the next four hours picking up two miles of trash <laughs> by the golf course. Yeah. Because I've done it, and the first time I did it, I picked up 18 bags of trash. And uh, the next day, I went back, and it was out there, like you said, again. But uh, not, to, not to give the mayor a big head here, but... Uh, last week, I read, uh, I went to Pine Tree, uh, Mr. Moore's not here, so I'll plug a pl uh, plug in for Pine Tree. I went to the elementary school, and uh, we had a World Read Day, and I read to Miss Fisher's class about 30 kids. But what impressed me the most was the person that I met walking in the door, and that was Andy's daughter. So she is taking the lead and putting a lot more back into the community just like the rest of the family has for so many, many, many years. Spencer Mack is a big plus to the Mack family, so congratulations, Doc. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. And that's all. Appreciate that. Mr. Willard. Uh, we have a few items to talk about. City boards and commissions are uh, now taking application for various committees. You can apply online at longviewtexas.gov or pick up an application at City Hall. We've had those applications in by April the 28th. And we also had them here tonight. Uh, they're at Ms. Ballinger's desk right here. If you'd like to pick one up tonight, please sign up. We, we enjoy um, participation by the community. Please uh, get involved. If you want to make a difference, you have a chance to get involved and do so. Uh, turn off the TV, put down the iPad, and enjoy some good old-fashioned quality time with your family. Family game night, and it's all free. Every Thursday night from 6 to 8.30, contact the library for more information. That's a great opportunity to go out and enjoy uh, good, clean, wholesome fun with friends and family. So thank you for putting that on public library. That's a wonderful ad asset for our city. We're going to help honor American veterans. It's so easy to donate. We've talked about this before. Go to vetplaza.org. We have a short little video. I've said it multiple times, <clears throat> and I'm going to continue to say it until we accomplish our goal. So if you get tired of hearing me say it, send your $5 in. It's all it's going to take. $5 from every citizen along with you. We accomplish the goal tomorrow. I've received two checks this week, uh, both very nice checks from people who don't know how to go to vetplaza.org, because not everybody works a computer or has access to it. So if you want to donate to this veterans organization to help complete the, the, con the concept that's going on at Teague Park, if you don't want to go to vetplaza.org and punch in your donation, feel free to drop it by my office and I will make sure it's hand delivered to the city every, every Thursday. So um, this is for our community. This is for the veterans. And once again, I'll say it, they deserve more than we could ever give. So please help them achieve this goal. Let's get this done. Let's get this uh, behind us. Move on to something else. So thank you all. Um, also, I would like to uh, talk about upcoming events. The Cat in the Hat is coming to the Belcher Center February 27th at 6.30. Kilgore College Theater is presenting Middletown February 23rd to the 26th. Cajun Steamers Mardi Gras Music Fest is March the 4th. The Zonta Antique Show is at Mont Cobb March 3rd to the 5th. The Theater of Longview presents Dearly Departed March 2nd to the 5th. For more information, on any of these events, check out the calendar or visit LongviewTexas.com to learn more. Be sure to add your event to our calendar so we can announce it and people will know to come and uh, participate. I also want to congratulate uh, Ms. Williams and Ms. Ishihara for stepping up and continuing to be willing to serve this community. You both serve the community very well and I'm proud to sit next to you all and uh, be a part of this council with you. I look forward to three more years of you all's service. Thank you so much. We did have a survey this week. It was a very pointed survey. When you're going about your normal day-to-day -day activities in Longview, do you feel safe? It's a simple question, but it bodes a very complex answer. 
It's yes or no. I can tell you 84% of the people in Longview said yes. And I look at that as a nice statistic, but I want that to be 100%. I want 100% of people to feel safe. Granted, this doesn't take into account where you live, which side of town, which area of town, but our goal is to keep Longview safe. And 84% is a good start. I hope next year this time we can come back and it's 94% or 100%. Because as I said earlier, there isn't a day that goes by that we don't put 100% of our effort into this community, into law enforcement and protecting our community, both police and fire. Every homicide that happens, every time my phone rings and Chief Bishop shows up, it's never good news. He doesn't ever call me to check on the weather. When Chief Bishop calls me, that means something is, is not going well. Every time that happens, someone's father, husband, brother, sister, aunt, child has lost a life. And that's significant to me and to everyone else. So we can talk about numbers all we want to. One is too many for me. One homicide means someone lost their life and none of us take that lightly. So our goal is to reduce those numbers and to make you, us, our citizenry feel safe. And I can assure you we're doing it every single day and we will not stop until we win. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, we will win, we will win. The second part of this survey if you saw suspicious activity or a crime being committed, would you call the police? This disturbs me. 98% said yes, which is great. But why is that not 100%? Why is it not, why would you see something suspicious or criminal and not call the police? To me, that means you're propagating the problem. So. If there's a problem and you have an issue with calling our police, I want to I know, I want to know why. Call me. We'll talk about it. Because there isn't a citizen in Longview that shouldn't feel safe calling our police and reporting a crime. And if you're not willing to do that, then you don't want to solve the problem. So you are the problem. And I don't mean that in a harsh way, but I do. That's our job, our duty, to protect each other. So I want this answer to be 100% also. We're gonna work on both of those. So thank you, this was an incredible survey this week. We had the, the biggest number of people answer a survey we had in the last 18 months. We had a huge um, turnout on this survey and I appreciate that and we got, I can't tell you how many comments we get. It's, 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 it's daily, hundreds of comments, it's amazing. So, and we, we read every one of them and we answer them to the best of our abilities. And some of them I, I can't answer, and I have to defer you to the people that know the answers, and the chief gives me answers and we get information, but get involved. You wanna make a difference? Get involved. Um, it does no good to sit there and hope something happens. If you wanna hope something happens, do something about it, because we are, we're doing something about it every day. So I appreciate that. Um, last item of business, Mayor Max Scholarship, gang. It's time, four $1,250 scholarships will be given. You must reside in Longview. You must be a graduating senior from either Longview, Hallsville, Pine Tree, or Spring Hill High School. You have to apply by March 31st. That's just a little over a month away. A one-page essay is all it takes. You fill out a simple little application and a one-page essay on what you would do to make Longview better, or how you see Longview could be better. We'll read every one of them and we'll come up with our uh, our winners and we'll announce them at a council meeting. So this is uh, an opportunity for you to get some college education money and um, further your education. So with that, we are adjourned.